Greetings and salutations my beautiful people and yes, surprise surprise, this video came about today because I got massively inspired by Your Movie Sucks' video series he did about TV shows that traumatised him in his childhood. And then of course I hear everything joined in along with the odd ones out and I just love the idea of sharing my own personal childhood traumas that I repressed from some of the TV I watched as a kid. Yes, as a kid. These things do not scare me anymore. Mostly. So enough Heinz baked beans and tomato sauce plus penises, let's kick this off. In no particular order, here are my 10 traumatic kids TV moments. Keep your bladder steady, it's going to be tested. So let's begin the horror with the Teletubbies. Yes, the Teletubbies. This entire video will be as embarrassing as this. I mean, to my credit, Teletubbies isn't exactly a grounded show, it's weird. Like, it's weird. Mom! There's no plot, no point, no reason, not even any comprehensible language to drive the show along. It's basically just an acid trip for people that are too young to take the real thing. And if an acid trip is anything like this show, then I never ever want to take it. <laughs> anyway, if you're a kid, chances are you're dumb. And this show presented to me probably the earliest memory of something that really unsettled me on TV in the dumbest way imaginable. When I was watching this show as a three-year-old, I came to expect the bright colors, the long-nosed living vacuum cleaner off its nuts on crack, the kids randomly appearing on the TV chests of each Teletubby and anything else. But one thing I never expected were aliens. Yes. Aliens. At random points, no joke, a fucking UFO would appear from the sky, land on the ground, and everyone gathered around, apparently happy about this, as it slowly opened up to reveal a tap dancing bear on a carousel thing. That is an alien tap dancing bear on a carousel thing. This thing came from the sky. How do we know it's not going to enslave us? Or burn us alive? And look at that cheap and tacky CGI. The bear's limbs stretch, he stares at the camera with soulless beady eyes way too frequently, and his movements are so stiff and unnatural, I just felt dirty whenever I watched it. I can't even explain it. I feel exactly the same way watching this now as I did when I was younger. It's an uncanny sequence and made even more creepy because of all that bad CG, unanswered questions, and just no point to it all. What's even worse is that the thing would do the dance, fly back into space, but then they... <laughs> Cool it down again. No, no! And at this point, I'd happily change the channel. If I was lucky, Funny Bones would be on. I told you this video would be embarrassing, didn't I? And the show itself never really bothered me. It's cute and harmless, probably the tamest TV show on this list. But what did bother me was the intro and the implications of it. Basically, listen to the words of this intro and imagine what would come to the mind of a kid who pieced it all together. In a dark, dark town, there was a dark, dark street. In the dark, dark street, there was a dark, dark house. In the dark, dark house, there were dark, dark stairs. Down the dark, dark stairs, there was a dark, dark cellar. And in the dark, dark cellar, some skeletons lived. Yeah, as a kid, I heard this whole intro like this. So kids, if you wait until the dead of the night and go into a dark empty house and downstairs into the dank dirty basement full of spiders, you'll find a family of dead rotted corpses walking around waiting for you. Maybe I looked into this too deeply as a young child, but nope, that is all I ever took from the premise of this show and it kept me scared of the dark for a long time. Funny bones? This isn't funny. More like... Shit your pants bones. Hey look, it's the Muppets! <laughs> Obviously, this wasn't on TV when I was born, but it was a TV show, and my parents had DVD compilations of the best bits of the show that I used to watch when I was around six or seven years old, and I guess if you're already scared of puppets and lifeless eyes, this show wouldn't be too much fun for you to watch nowadays, let alone as kids. But as a kid, I loved puppets, so this was never an issue for me. I will come clean, I was actually about to break the rules on this list because I nearly put a movie in here with that infamous part of the Muppet Christmas Carol and the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come, but yeah, that's movie-based nightmare fuel. That's a different topic for a different day. My name my name is Michael Caine, and I'm in a kid's film with a screaming dog, a dying baby frog, and death himself taking me into hell. What have I done? Now, nah, the thing that traumatized me as a kid was something that I'm sure was supposed to be funny, but just came across to me as a nasty shock. In one of the episode sketches, Muppet Labs with Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, he tests out some edible paper clips on his eager assistant, Beaker. Uh-uh. <laughs> Beaker, what is the matter? He ends up trying the edible paper clips, but actually ends up liking them. Okay, thank God. Maybe the joke was just that edible paper clips are useless and it averted our expectations on something going wrong. I can't see anything bad happening now. Christ on a bike! Can you seriously blame me for having a heart attack over this? Look! It's so sudden. It's such a terrifying thought as well. Imagine having your nose just fall off like that. This wouldn't be so bad, but then Beaker freaks the fuck out and I was just beside myself by this point. <laughs> 
Okay, no more DVDs for Babby Caddy. Time to tune back into the safety blanket of children-specific TV channels. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, I don't know. How about they air a show called The Animals of Farthing Wood? Animals in a wood with a badger voiced by Ron Moody, also known as Fagin from Fagin Oliver. How is this traumatic in any way at all? Well, here's the synopsis. A group of animals have their home destroyed by humans as a new housing estate is being built. So with nowhere to turn, Fox takes charge and the rest of the animals spend the entire series trying to find a nature reserve and be protected. But this was structured like animal game of Thrones. Self-contained adventure episodes, part of a much bigger story with weaving character arcs and plot lines, and death everywhere. Characters you hated, characters you loved, close friends of the main characters, innocent babies, anyone could die at any point. And I don't mean off screen either. There's dead bodies in this thing. I mean, need I say more? It was absolutely heart bursting and extremely intense viewing for younger kids. And as far as the man hates animals and is worse than Satan plot ideology is concerned, this wasn't anywhere near as heavy as something like Watership Down or God forbid the Plague Dogs, but then they weren't kids movies in the first place. They were just 2D animations. Cartoon does not mean kids suitable, everybody. But this here was created specifically for children on UK children's TV networks, and luckily I decided it wasn't my thing after two episodes or so, because what I did see scarred me enough. So much death. Animals of death wood. Animals of farthing death. Animals of death death. I need something lighter hearted. Count Duckula, perfect. It's really gothic and dark, but you have a duck voiced by David Jason who was created by a satanic ritual that was supposed to infuse blood in a cauldron of other ingredients, but instead had ketchup mixed in and the duck has a nanny who sounds like this. Yes, thank you, ducky boos, never better. Yes, there's even an evil doer in the show who's literally an egg in a chair. It's, it's pretty fucking funny, but that didn't mean it didn't creep me out on occasion. Okay, I say on occasion, I mean every episode. The ending credits of this show terrified me as a kid, and please don't ask me why, because I cannot tell you. It's pathetic. It's just a series of generic, spooky, cliched images and characters popping up in between the writing, but man, I must have been more sensitive than a clip because this whole sequence terrified me. I think the main thing that freaked me out was the extremely rigid movements of each image as they flashed in and out between different poses. Something about it just looked so unnatural that it made their already spooky, black and white, old and timey appearance even more otherworldly. It's the same reason I was scared of stop motion animation puppets for the longest time. My dad showed me Army of Darkness when I was nine and I didn't like it. You know, it looked real, it looked like they were there, but it wasn't smooth, it wasn't even robotic, it was just slightly off with the jumping frames and sharp jagged movements that was enough to mess with my head's understanding of what I was looking at, which of course makes for good horror generally, things that you can't even quite comprehend. Although with that very elaborate justification aside, that still doesn't change the fact that I was still scared of something that looked like this. <laughs> All right, maybe I can redeem my street credit here. Who is scared of spiders? Aww. Yeah, I'm not. I don't necessarily like them all the time. I mean, in some games, they can be outright terrifying. However, I'm not arachnophobic or anything. I think they're very, very cool. But it never used to be like this. Because like most kids, when I was younger, spiders were the worst. I remember one time in my childhood, I had a bunk bed without a bottom bed so that I could have a desk there. And I slept on the top of this thing. And one night I woke up to find a house spider on the ceiling right by my fucking face. And I had to sleep on the landing floor out of my bedroom for days afterwards. It was right in my face. A bit confusing why I like Spider-Man so much then, right? I watched the animated series of Spider-Man religiously as a young and I had DVD sets, watched it on TV on Saturday mornings and ended up with the games and eventually watched the movies because of the show. I just loved watching it. I can't comment on how the show is now. I haven't watched it for years. I do remember it being cheesy as fuck though. The pain, not now. But I can say there was one episode with one particular moment that fucked with me too much. If I remember correctly, in this part, Peter Parker is telling the story on how he got his spider powers to a super fan. And in this story, he gets bitten by the radioactive spider, but contrary to what I thought the story went like, he didn't get his powers straight away. Instead, he starts to slowly morph and twist into... A spider? Aunt May, it's me, Peter. <laughs> It's obviously then revealed to be a hallucinogenic nightmare, so then it's like, thank God. But up until that moment, my little head was alive and buzzing with gross and alarming visions, not only of a body horror rendition of the Spider-Man mythos, but one of myself changing into that spider with my fucking head on it. Transforming things have always unnerved me. I think it's because when I was younger, I put myself in the character's shoes of whoever was transforming, and I could imagine the lack of control and the pain and the buckling deformed bones mangling into whatever the body was morphing into. It was way too much for my mind to handle, and it wouldn't have been too bad if he just turned into a spider, just a to completely 100% spider, but a spider with your own human head still on it? This is so messed up, even Bloodborne, fucking Bloodborne did it. <laughs> However, there was one thing that I found a little bit creepier than spiders when I was younger. Captain Scarlet. 
Created in the late 60s from the same mind behind Thunderbirds, Jerry Anderson, this here was a kick-ass secret agent puppet show. For the love of God, please stay with me. About an indestructible man saving the world from an alien threat. And yes, I watched it on TV when I was a child when it first aired, because I'm actually an extremely sexy undercover 70-year-old. Do not ask me about my formulated skin cream because I'm not telling you shit. Anyway, not only did Captain Scarlet have one of the best theme tunes of all time, Captain Scarlet! But it also had lots of well, sudden and secretive sniper deaths. Show that to a kid and try to get them to leave the house ever again. But also one of the most daunting and foreboding intros in TV history. Where are we? Who are we? Where are we going at this time of night? Well, why is the music like this? <laughs> It also had a pretty vivid and nasty ending credit sequence with photorealistic artist renditions of Captain Scarlet in literal death situations, and these images alone were enough to give me nightmares. It didn't matter that I knew that he was indestructible, I just imagined me being in those situations, like I did with Speed to Spark a Spider. So I imagined myself suffocating and desperate for my final breaths as green goo consumes my flesh, falling off of a skyscraper, tied up in front of a killer snake, about to have my face melted off and thrown across the room by dynamite as I was being crushed by rocks, weighed down underwater face to face with a gang of vicious sharks, about to have my muscles pierced and torn by multiple spikes in the walls, I need counselling! But the absolute worst thing about Captain Scarlet was the alien threat, the Mysterons. What are they? No one knows. All we do know is that they're represented by holographic circles, and they're trying to conquer the world, and that they can possess people, including one of the good guys, Captain Black, who then gets revealed in future intro credit sequences in a fucking graveyard. <laughs> However, the worst thing about them is that you just had no idea what they were. You never saw them, you never had any idea how big they were, how they could do all this magic shit that they were doing. It just seemed like whenever they appeared, you were fucked. And whenever they appeared, they sounded like this. This is the voice of the Mr. Arms. We know that you can hear us, Earthmen. Well, give me a quick flick and a kick in the dick. Advertisement, save me! Ah, there's nothing quite like the sweet embrace of commercialism creeping into your little kiddie brain gearing you up to write your Christmas list. I used to love TV adverts, and some can even be very imaginative and funny, as well as make you want the product. Look at this one even, about Wrigley's Excite Mints. <laughs> there's a man asleep on the sofa who's just woken up. Oh, look at that there. Did he have a rough night? Okay, stop for a second. I know that this isn't a TV show, but I figured that I could let an advert that runs in between all of the TV shows shows, slide in just for this one example. Why in particular? Well, I'm not even going to explain why. You just sit there and watch it. And you sit there and watch it and you imagine yourself as a child absorbing the majestic artistry. Excite, extreme mint refreshment. I need medication. Oh. Hey, Pingu, I've taken too many pills. I feel sticky. Do you, do you even understand? Maybe you should have some meds so that you'll know how I feel. Yeah, let me just let me just give you some. Right, lovely. Yeah, let's let's have a trip together. <laughs> okay, seriously, seriously, can we just? Talk about this. Pingu, one of the most imaginative, expressive, and funny slapstick stop motion shows ever made. Appeals to all ages. I still love this show. But do you think I ever trusted Pingu again after this episode aired when I was really, really little? Here, Pingu has a bad dream, and it starts off with his bed growing legs and walking him around, and it's all very charming and silly and weird, but then, hello, sex pest! Who in the studio thought this was a good idea? Who made this model and said to themselves that this was a good thing to show to kids? The size of it, the whiskers, the eyes, those teeth! It looks unlike anything else in the Pingu universe, and the low, growling, simpleton voice samples damning your ears along with your eyes as he tries to capture Pingu in an igloo and laughs maniacally to the sky is just too much, okay? <laughs> you can't reason with this thing. He doesn't understand you. You can't understand it. It just wants to eat you. But nothing will ever take my 
next pick, my number one pick, as it were. I know this list isn't in any particular order, but I would have to put this at the top, no question. This was the only thing that I saw on TV as a kid that was meant for kids that I ended up watching, but then had to run out of the room. I was so petrified of what I'd seen. I don't mean to big it up or anything, but it affected me that much when I was younger, so... Has anyone in the audience heard of Wurzel Gummidge? <laughs> Uh, okay, let me explain. This quirky kid sitcom about a scarecrow getting up to mischief and adventures with the farmer's kids and the crow man who made him, I had watched on a VHS my parents had. I really liked it and I still do, honestly. John Pertwee is just a childish sweetheart, the jokes are subtle and sometimes really funny, the script is alright, if a little dated, I mean, this is the 70s. The acting is good, the music was farmery and stupid, but then one certain episode came on. Just one. And then this happened. The episode starts off with the kids washing up and they want to go and take some cake mix over to Wurzel in the field so they can all share it together. But little do they all know that... Let's surprise him! Boo! Sulking again. What a pity! We'll just have to eat all this sponge cake mix ourselves! Oh no, you're wrong! Ah! 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 I mean, yeah, it turns out this daft head is a recurring character from an earlier episode, but my parents only had a few episodes of season three, so I had no idea who daft head was or what to even expect. So when this fucking monster jumped out at my screen, I had to replace my pants. Even the name of the episode gave me no idea what to expect. That didn't mean anything to my child brain. And what's even worse is that this thing is actually a Frankenstein's monster scarecrow made by Wurzel himself, but the creation isn't happy with the creator anymore and turns out to be just as aggressive as he looks, eventually ending up in a fight to the scarecrow death, which he actually wins by decapitating lovable little Wurzel Gummidge. He wins. That stare is like a bulldog chewing on a wasp. It's horrifying. Of course, there's a happy ending and everything ends up back to normal, and nowadays I can watch the episode and actually appreciate it for some of the completely ridiculous jokes. I can count and I can sing. Oh, old MacDonald is a farm. Come into the garden. Man! You ain't putting that there dog into that there sack, because it's coming for me, that dog is. Ah, suit yourself. I'll put you in it instead. <laughs> you ain't ever had your breakfast. No, I ain't. Where did I get it from? From the farmhouse. You go straight through the farmhouse door and he says to the farmer's wife, Here I am, missus. I come for my breakfast and look sharp about it. But until I could look at it subjectively, this here will always be the main thing that gave my six-year-old self total nightmares from anything to do with UK television. And there you have it, my 10 most traumatic kids TV moments. I've embarrassed myself enough today, so now it's your guys' turn. Go to the comments right now and leave some of your things that scared the crap out of you as a kid. TV shows, mind you. Or ads. I mean, I did an ad, didn't I? Thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time, if it's your birthday today or watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Before I go though, this video has been sponsored by thepixelempire.com. If you'd like to see all of my merchandise in t-shirts, hoodies, and tank tops, or even get yourself some amazingly beautiful gaming wall prints that are all set up, glossy, and ready for framing, then please click the link in the description now. And by the way, clicking on the link gives you an automatic special caddy discount on checkout. Last time we talked about Pixel Empire, there was a competition indeed, and I just like to congratulate all of the winners of that competition that we just had. So Sarah Forrest, Melanie Jones, Austin Aguiar, I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I don't mean any offence, Jared Wood and Keegan Connor. Well done guys and just stay tuned until the next competition and you might have a chance to win some really awesome stuff from the site. Thanks again for listening and I'll see everybody next time. Ta-ra! Yeah, yeah, yeah.